Hi there, this is Mar Haddad here again. In uh, this lecture, I have to do a lab to show you about uh, how to configure OSPF on the Juniper routers, but also to show you about the Hello package. So we are going to play a little bit with the things that you can change on the Hello package to see that at the end, if we will have neighborship or not. As you can see here, we have a lab of seven points. Before I start doing those points, let's go to the lab scenario to show you what is my scenario. Then I will come back to the points and start doing them. So this is my scenario, it's very simple. I do have two Juniper routers, router one, router two, they are connected to each other. From this side, you get 001, and from that side, fast internet 001. So what I'm going to do in this lab, I have to put IP addresses. So from this side, 10.10.10.1, from that side, 10.10.10.2. After doing that, of course, we have to put that interface and that interface also, we have to put them as a trust uh, as a zone because uh, otherwise we cannot or those routers cannot uh, ping each other they cannot reach each other and then i have to enable ospf on this router and i have to enable ospf on this router then we should have directly neighborship then what i'm going to do is just to go and play with the uh, ospf hello packets so i'm gonna change for example the uh, interval which is hello interval from one router to make it 11 from the other side is 10, and then we will see that it's not going to have neighborship anymore. Also, we may change, for example, the password, and then we will see as well. So those things that I have already explained in the last lecture, those things, they should always match between the two routers. Otherwise, they will not have neighborship. So this is all what we are going to do in this lecture. Let's go now back to the points and start doing them. Point number one, on router one, put the interface gigabit 0 over 0 over 1 on the trust zone and give it an IP address of 10.10.10.1 slash 24. So let me put the picture here and let's go directly to router one. So actually I'm on router two. I have to move the cable to put it on router one. So I'm using also cable here. All right, so now I should be on router one. Very good. So what I need to do is to put the interface which is fast internet or gigabit ethernet 0 slash 0 slash 0 in the trust zone. Why I do that? Because if I say here show, look, the interface, which is uh, this one, you see? So that one, first of all, yeah, it, it is an ethernet switching. So that's a switching port. And then that means also I need to change it to make it an INET port to be able to put IP address on it. So, so it's a routed port. And then also look here, if we go down on the security zone and we look on the zones here, we can see that on the trust zone, there is uh, only, well, we see the gigabit zero slash zero slash zero. And uh, yeah, we need to put it also on this trust zone gigabit zero slash zero slash one because I need to ping it. So let's do those two things. First of all, we have to make it an INET port. So that means a routed port. So I have to delete uh, uh, then the interface gigabit zero over zero over one dot zero family ethernet switching. So I delete it. Now, um, once I delete it, that's, uh, you can say here, uh, edit interface gigabit zero slash zero slash one unit zero. Actually, you can say unit zero, you can say dot zero, it's the same. And then I say family inet. And then I have to say set an IP address on it 10.10 .10, or set address, we should say here, set address 10.10.10.1 10 .10 10 slash 24. So if I say it's now show, here we go, we have the IP address on it. And now, of course, don't forget, we have to uh, put it on the security zone, which is trust. So uh, we have to go from here and have to say set security zone, security zone, trust interface gigabit zero over zero over one. All right, very good. So now I make commit and that's it. So now I do have that interface, a routed interface. That means I can put IP address on it. And uh, it is on this trust zone. I need it to be on the trust zone so I can ping it. Otherwise, you can leave it on the untrust zone, but then you can give the privilege to be able to be pinged because on the untrust zone, then it cannot uh, be pinged. All right. Point number one is done. Point number two. Now we need to configure OSPF on, uh, on that interface with area zero. So let's do that. We're still on router one. 
how to configure OSPF is very easy. So we have to say edit protocol OSPF area zero. And now we can say set interface gigabit. Here we have to write it, it doesn't take the tab. Gigabit zero slash zero slash one. And that's it. That's it. So if I say now show, we can see that this interface is now populated on area zero of OSPF. So now I have to say commit and quit. So this router has been fully configured for OSPF. You see, configure OSPF on Juniper is not a big deal. Port number two is done. Port number three, also on router two, we have to put now the fastener at zero over zero over one on the trust zone and give it an IP, which is same range, 10.0.10.10.2 actually. And we have to configure it on OSPF. So let me move the console cable and I put it on the router two. Very good. Now I go to the uh, command line and let's do clear here. All right, we are on router two. So first I have to check where or what this interface has, the fastnet zero over zero over one. So if we look uh, down in the security, let's check here. So that is the fast internet zero over zero over one. It's also a switching port. So I need to make it a routed port and I need to also make it, uh, put it in the trust zone. All right, very good. So let's do that. Let's first delete interface fast internet zero over zero over one and then family um, we have to say here actually unit zero family ethernet switching and now we have to say edit interface fast ethernet and then I can say dot zero instead of saying unit zero and then family inet and I will put an IP address on it which is 10.10.10.2 slash 24 we check here we go and now I have to go to the security zone and then I have to say set security zone, security zone, and then trust. And I will put the interface fast internet zero over zero over one. Very good. So that's something is done over here. Now I need to configure the OSPF for the upcoming point. So let's configure OSPF right away. Edit protocol OSPF area zero set interface fast internet zero over zero so actually here we have to make dash zero over zero over one and then enter and now i'll say commit and quit so uh, i wait for this commit to finish and then i just want to make ping from my router 2 to router 1 to be sure that they can see each other Otherwise, the uh, OSPF will not be formed, the neighborship. And then uh, also, in the upcoming point, we have to see if the OSPF has been formed on those two routers. So let's wait until this uh, commit is finished. And let's do the ping. And in my case, look to the picture. I'm on router 2. I have to ping to 10.10.10.1. So let's wait for the commit to finish. It takes a bit long because that's a CRX uh, router, an old uh, router. By the way, um, the fact of the trust zone and the untrust zone, that's because I'm using the CRX, which is a secure uh, gateway router. Uh, so, uh, and you may not have this uh, on your router, uh, on your Juniper router, so you may not really need to play with the trust zone and the untrust zone. All right, so let's do the ping now to 10.10.10.1. Here we go. So the ping is working, and in the upcoming point, I have to check if the OSPF neighbor has been formed. Point number three is done, point number four is done. Now check if both routers can ping each other and check if the OSPF neighborship is being formed. So we have checked on router two that they can ping each other. Let's check now on router two if there's neighborship. So how to check that? So we have to say show OSPF neighbor. Show OSPF neighbor shows you directly that you have a neighbor with 10.10.10.1, which is router one. We are router two, so we have neighbor with router one. So yeah, so far so good. Everything looks fine. And we do have now a neighborship 
with the router one. Point number five is done. Point number six, go on router one and change the hello interval to 12. Is the neighborship point and bring it back to 10. So let's go to router one. I will move the cable, put it again on router one. All right, so now we go to here and we are on router one now. So first let's check what is the uh, hello interval on router one. So to do that, we have to say show OSPF and we go to the interface. Let's say interface details or detail. And over here, you can see that the hello is 10. Always the dead interval is four times more than the hello interval. So from this side is 10, from the other side is also 10. That's why the neighborship is being formed. Now they asked us here that on router one change the hello interval to 12. So at this moment, if we repeat the comment of the neighbor, show SPF neighbor, we do have neighbor. Let's change now the hello, instead of being 10, make it 12, because those should be the same. So I make it now 12. So how to do that? We go to edit, and then I will go from here to edit, and then I have to say in OSPF or protocol OSPF area zero, and then set interface, and in this case, we are on the gigabit 0 over 0 over 1.0. And then the hello interval, you can make it from 1 to 255. Five. As I said, make it 12. Enter. Commit and quit. So now I'm on router 1 and I have changed the hello interval. I made it 12. And I'm going to check if anything will be changed. So now if I repeat the comment show OSPF neighbor, let's clear the screen and then say show OSPF neighbor. We shouldn't have any more neighbor with router 2. But look, we still have neighbor. And the reason why is because this dead interval needs to be finished. Now, remember, it is for 40 seconds. So now it's decrementing. If I repeat it, you see it's now 29. So we have to wait now for 29 seconds. And once these 29 seconds are finished, then we shouldn't see any more neighbor with router 2. Let's give it a bit of time. So until this is finished, let's check. Now we still have eight seconds. And in a moment, two seconds. And then now, here we go. No more neighbor. Because the hello packets are not the same. The, uh, the, or they are not having the same hello interval. So that's why we don't have neighborship. So now let's bring it back. I will go again and I'll make the hello to be again, uh, 10 seconds. So edit protocols, OSPF area zero. And then here we have to say set interface gigabit, uh, zero slash zero slash one dot zero. And then hello interval will make it 10 again. And commit and quit. So now we should have the neighborship formed again. Let's check now. Show OSPF neighbor. Here we go. So now the OSPF neighborship has been formed again. Point number six is done. Point number seven on router one, put a password on the OSPF for the interface gigabit zero slash zero slash one. Is the neighbor still formed? So now we do have neighbor and at, by default, there is no any password. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put the password on router one for the hello packet. And from the other side, I don't put anything. And remember the password, if we go back to here, so the password should be the same. Otherwise there will not be neighborship. So let me show you how we can do that. So again, we have to go to edit a protocol OSPF area zero, and then set interface gigabits zero over zero over one. Then make question mark here, and I'm going to use the authentication. So which is over here? That is the authentication. So uh, say here authentication, and you can use on authentication MD5 or simple password for this lab. I'm going to use simple password, and then here. I can say one, two, three, four, five, six, for example. So I put this, the simple password commit. And now I just put a password on that side. From the other side, there is no password. Then in this case, we shouldn't have any more neighborship. So let's check run show or SPF neighbor. So again, remember this dead interval needs to be finished. And then once it is finished, then we shouldn't have any more neighbor with router 2. Let's wait also for this to be finished. 
and then we will check again. So we still have 17 seconds. After 17 seconds, we will see that they will not have any more neighbor between router one and router two. Let's see, six seconds. One, and now it's, here we go, it's finished. Very good. So let's put now the, or let's remove the password because uh, we just put the password, so we remove it for uh, the neighborship to be formed again. So edit protocol OSPF area zero. And now I have to say here, set interface gigabit. And here, or we have to say actually delete interface gigabit zero slash zero slash one dot zero authentication. And I think that's more than enough to do commit and quit. So we remove now completely the password on the interface. That means they will be forming again neighborship. Let's check that. Show OSPF neighbor. Here we go. Point number seven is done. And uh, with this point, I have uh, showed you how you can play with the OSPF uh, uh, hello package. So there are some things inside the hello package that should match on both sides for the neighborship is being formed. If they are not matched, then the neighborship will not be formed. I have only showed you about the hello interviewer and the password, but also there are more things that you can uh, do. So uh, you see here, we have the area. So that's also, if you change the area from both sides, do not be the same area, then they will not form a neighborship. And you have the stop area flag. So if you make one of the interface and in stop area, then also the neighborship will not be formed. So this is what I wanted to show you in this lecture. I hope it was informative for you and I'll see you in the upcoming lecture.